All right, my name is Solomon Oluwabiyi. Thank you for joining us today, whether you are joining us on Facebook or you are joining us on YouTube, or wherever you are joining us, be it morning for you, afternoon, or evening. Thank you for joining us. This is Let's Talk About Jesus. And today I have bring a family, I bring a couple, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Dr. Adekanye, they are with me on today's program. And we are going to be looking at a very important topic, the family essential foundation in nation building. The family essential foundation in nation building. And so find a seat and join us as we go through today's conversation. Again, this is Let's Talk About Jesus, and you are welcome. Uh, so I want to thank you, sir, for joining us, and mommy for joining us on this program today. Let's Talk About Jesus. Thank you for your God time. Bless you. Thank, thank you. you for having us. God bless you. All right. I am thrilled for having both of you together to discuss this very crucial uh, topic, um, as I believe is very crucial to anyone who may listen to this, be it now or in the nearest future. And so today we are looking at the family essential foundation in nation building. And of course, uh, Satan has been disrupting family from the beginning of the world uh, and it's of no secret today that in our world families remain primary concern for the devils to tear apart so i'm going to throw the question out um anyone among you can answer anyone among you can add to it mine is to ask the question and i am listening and learning and i hope every one of our viewers will be listening and learning and by the way uh it's also going to be made available on podcast channel so wherever you get your podcast from be it on google or uh, apple podcasts any outlet you get your podcast from including uh spotify you can listen to us on there so here is my first question to you today uh on this program uh, i would like for you to uh, give us a brief formation of family as originated by God from the beginning. Praise God. Um, first of all, God created man and woman. When God created the heaven and earth, the Bible said, Everything was perfect until when they get to the creation of women. So when women was not created, it was imperfect. So until woman was formed, was created from Adam's rib, that was when he said, now it is good. Because if you look at Genesis chapter 1, going on, it says, it, it, uh, God created heaven and earth. God created sun. He created water. He does this. He did that. And it was good. And when you go to another verse, you said it was not good for a man. Will. But then before that, he said, let us create man. If you look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says, Then God said, let us create man in our image according to our likeness. So God created man for a reason. And the reason is to, in order for God to have a fellowship with man, so that man also will take care of God's creation. And so God started the whole scenario about family. No human being uh, started a uh, family. So God created man. And you look at uh, Genesis chapter uh, 1, verse 26 again, it says it. So if you go on and go on, it says, Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over the cattle, over now. Everything that God created was put under what? Under man, even though man was the last to be created. So he put them under man. And if you go on to look at Genesis chapter two again, 
if you look at verse uh, 21, and he says, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in his place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. And verse 24 says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother, and be joined to his wife, and they, become, they shall become one flesh. The last verse on in chapter 2 says, And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So God started the whole scenario about the family. We didn't start it. We didn't start it. God started everything. So and that's exactly what family And then when he started it, he said they should do a subdue the land. Okay, I just want to add, thank you for that. And I want to add this to it that uh, he has said, the family is the foundational institution of society and it's ordained by God. It's not man-made, it's God himself that taught it fit that it's not good for a man to be by himself. You know, God created man in his image, he put man in the garden of Aiden, where the man would go out and walk by the time he came home, he's there by himself, probably cooking, you know, sleeping by himself, and God said, this is not the right thing. So now God made man, a woman out of the rib of the man, a head made that is fit for him. And that's how, you know, uh, family started, which is uh, uh, it is consistent by marriage and it's composed of uh, people that are related by blood or uh, uh, it could be in these days, it could be I mean, an adoption, a child that you adopted into your home is still part of your family. And uh, if you want to go uh, extend it further, we could say that we still have extended family, nuclear family, extended family, you know, compound family, community, and that's how we have the society. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for that wonderful foundation that we need to get into our conversation today. Um, so when you look at the way uh, Satan was kicked out, uh, and I use that kicked out loosely, uh, from heaven, uh, could that be the reason why he's here to shred the things that God uh, created? Ah, uh, yes, I would say you know that uh, Satan is always trying to throw his arrow at families. And he started it right from the beginning. Uh, in Genesis chapter 3, we, uh, we saw how, we read how uh, Satan came to deceive Eve. And Eve also gave the food to her husband. And because of that, we see how God, I mean, God has already been coming to them according to the word of God in the code of the day. You know, the rapport was there, the enjoyment uh, was there. But now, when Satan came to, Satan saw that and Satan was so angry. Oh, why would this happen? Remember the story of uh, how Satan was thrown out of heaven in the book of Isaiah. So now he came his he was so angry and he thought of what he would do and deceit came in through the woman and now the rapport that has been there, there was a strange relationship now. Uh, I know the Bible did not say that uh, both Adam and Eve were arguing, but we know what will happen because of the statement that Adam said to God. Uh, it's because the woman that you gave me you know, you know what will have happened between the two of them. Where you cause it, where you cause it. You know that argument. So that's the oneness now that is a break in the oneness of uh, 
two people that God has created. And now that house is then Satan has been so furious and destroyed a family, is always envy and bitter. But the child of God is doing well. And we also see how uh, the issue of Cain and neighbor when they have children. What what would cause you know two of the both of you made a uh, sacrifice to God? One was accepted, one was not accepted. So why would you go and kill the one that uh, his offering was accepted? Isn't that uh, the work of the devil? And that was right from the beginning. You know, uh, the Bible uh, tells us that uh, the devil, in the, the devil, he what as his work is to come to steal to destroy. That's his work, and we read that in even in two. It's going up and down, up and down. Uh, the book of Peter also said, looking for what? Those to destroy. That is to work. It's always busy to look for those to destroy. And from the what happened at the beginning, when we read in the book of Revelation 12, 13, 13, if we read the 13 to 17, but I will skip the in between, I will read uh, 13 and 17. Say, now when the dragon saw, devil is also uh, called dragon. When the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. And verse 17 said, and the dragon was engraved with the woman. And he went to make war with the rest of the offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Satan has been engraved right from that time. And since then, he's looking, persecuting the offering of the woman, looking for a way to bring them down. And that's why, as a Christian, we should take our stand and set the boundary that not. This is my home, Satan. No, this is no go area for you. And uh, which we will probably talk about it uh, later on. God will help us. Right. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I just want to add a quick some uh, addition to it, and that is Satan was not actually created as Satan. He was created, he was Lucifer. He was, I mean, he fell down, but one thing that if you look at Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 to uh, 14 again, he said, he said something about Satan. Then, one thing that I want to, uh, if you look at verse 15, then yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depth of the pit. And I wonder, and we have mass, I mean, the other time I taught Sunday school, I asked that question. We have mass, we have Jupiter. We do not have human beings. Why will Satan and uh, uh, Lucifer be cast? Why couldn't he be cast into all those uh, uh, empty spaces? We do not have human. But then he has to be. And, and if, if the Bible says you be cast into Sheol, as earth, the earth becomes Sheol now, or what? These are questions that I keep on asking myself. And since then, and remember, when, when uh, uh, Satan was cast into, into this world, at the same time, in the Garden of Eden, the Bible says something about the sat about Satan, that Satan is going to do what? He's going to bite the heel of the man, of, uh, of the descendant of the one, of the man. And the man also will bruise his what? His head. And, and his apples, and, and this is what took Jesus Christ to the cross of Calvary for our salvation. So I look at it. Shouldn't the devil be cast into elsewhere? Why is it now? And then the devil is now interested in everyone that follows God's pattern for family. Every family that follows God's pattern, the devil is there to do it, to pull them down. So just like my wife said, you as an individual have to take a drastic measure, drastic step against him. With the help of the Holy Spirit, may the Lord help us. Amen. Amen. Wow, that was a really good uh, foundation to our today's uh, conversation or questions. 
So that leads me to our next question. Uh, it's now obvious that devil is about his business. He has came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. So my next question. So how important then is family in our today's society? How important is the family? The family is very important. Just like that, it was said earlier by my wife that we have a nuclear family, a senior family, and I would say that we have joint family too. And the family is the one. It's very important in every society. All right? Now, in the church, the church is seen as a family. Sometimes, People call the whole one, now people call the whole one as one family because of the fact that there is internet connection. It's not because we are spiritually one, but because of the fact that we are able to connect with one another. And that tells you the importance of family, the meaning of family. A group of people that can get in touch with one another, whether they are living under the same roof or by, by, by way of a, a job, or any other uh, things, or maybe the education has taken them elsewhere, they still remain, they still remain as a what? As a needed uh, uh, people, group of people. So family is, is what? Is, is very important and is the beginning. Any, any community starts from a family. You cannot have a community without a family. In fact, in communities now, people look at it and say, oh, we are the same family because we live in the same community. And people now believe that family do no longer does not uh, represent your blood related people. It has now been coined to be like, okay, as long as you are living in an environment, the same environment, and you, you wake up in the morning, you see your neighbor and say, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, you give a lift, and you play together, your children play with their children, they believe you are the same family until issues that are beyond their control happens. That's why they will know that, oh, that's not really the meaning of family. So the husband, the wife, and the children, that's a nuclear family. The husband, the children, their grand, their parents, that's a select family and their siblings. But then when they bring their children together, now it becomes what? It becomes a joint family. All right? So, the, the family is what? It's actually very important in anything we do. Now, remember, charity begins at home, from home. So, you're sending your children out to school. It's meeting other family men and children, the children from other family too. So, whatever you do in your own family will be carried out into the what? Into, the, uh, 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 into, uh, uh, into schools or out there. The children will also bring something to your family. Now, your family now is now responsible to do what? To, to now make sure that they, they, they follow the children in order to know what the children have brought into the, into the family. And otherwise, it can create what? Problem for them either now or in their near future when they are grown. So a family is what? Is very important. Just like we say that an atom is what? Is the smallest indivisible part of a what? Of an element. The same thing. A family is an indivisible part of what? Of a society. So we cannot have a society without having a what? A, a, a family. Thank you so much. I think we should end uh, putting my own thoughts about uh, how important uh, family, the importance of family in a society today. Actually, the importance of family in a society today cannot be uh, emphasized. Because without family, there cannot be society. Uh, individuals from different families, you know, come together to do things. Sometimes they come, they may not have the same belief system, but they still have some things in common. Individuals from different families hold positions of authority in our society. So those that hold positions of uh, our authority, those are the names of our flag. They didn't come from heaven. They, are, they didn't come from tree. They are from family, different family coming together. 
So a child from a healthy family who has been taught that every individual is unique with skills and I have unique identity. We value and treat every human being he or she comes in contact with anywhere in the world. Because the value of the society uh, of the family is carried into the marketplace out there. An individual in the position of authority, that marriage is seen as an institution that requires commitment, trust, and you know, run with integrity. Those virtues will reflect in any position that individual is holding in society. So we now see how it is very important, how family is important now. So such individuals will see their followers, their colleagues, co-workers, customers, and even their work environment and turn that place to a place of joy, happiness for who, whoever enters into that family, into that uh, uh, workplace. So the place they, they will see that place, turn that place to a place of caring and sharing. And above all, they will turn the place to a place of love, where everyone is loved, everyone is valued, everyone is seen as a, uh, being created by God. So we we'll see that uh, someone that sees uh, uh, in Philippians that have been trained from Philippians uh, for hey, that see finally my brother, whatever things are true. Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. A child that is meditating on this world will not go astray. We carry this virtue into the society, into this workplace. And we will not start the, we will not see if this thing has been, as the family has taken their stand and been in the right stand with God, we will not see the, all the vices we are seeing in our society today. So, one, like I said earlier, the importance of family in our nation building in our society cannot be overemphasized. Oh, thank you so much. The important cannot be overemphasized and charity begins at home. To all our viewers, uh, please, if you have questions, contributions, you can send it to us through the chat and we will address them. All right. So thank you, sir. Thank you, Mark. The next question for you is how, uh, why, why does Satan constantly hear his arrow at family? Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. Remember initially I said that God said that the Bible said that the serpent would bite the what? Would bite uh, the, the, the seed of the what? Of the woman. And the seed of the woman would do what? Would bruise the head. So there will be constant enmity between man and, and Satan and but then if you as a Christian once you become a Christian the devil does not want you to go all free like that because he owns this word but in quote when I say he owns this word it's not that I'm saying that he has control over the whole universe God still what is God is still suffering he has everything in his hand Satan is against the family today because he knows that the family that stays together, they pray together, they are weapon, they are tools in the hand of the Lord to fight against him. And the Bible says in the book of uh, uh, Ephesians, Ephesians, if you look at the book of Ephesians chapter 6, it says something, if you, if you look at the standard of verse 10, they, 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 those who are, we are not fighting man. We actually we see two people fighting physically. Ask them very well. Whatever made them to fight is caused by some issues that possibly, which is not even possible, that Satan brought into their life, into their life. Husband and wife, parents and children, among the children themselves, 
mother and children, father and children. Now, it, it happens. We and our extended family members. Right. And that's why the Bible told us in the book of uh, 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 Ephesians that we should be strong in the Lord and in the power of His mind. Because the Bible says, He who take His stand should be to, to take heed, lest He falls. Lest He fall. And He said, We are not ignorant of the, of the devices of the devil. We know it. So we should do what we should fight. He says, stand therefore. And after you have stand, now we have to do what he told us all the weapons we need. If you look at the weapons we need, we have in the in the uh, in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, starting from verse 14. Man. Before that, it, uh, the Bible told us that we are wrestling against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spirit who are spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. He said, we are not fighting with man. We are not fighting with blood. We are not fighting with flesh. So Satan is there to attack everybody, especially Christians. Now, in other words, if you look at all the armor of God, it's not what the Bible says we should put on all the armor. It is a one. All. Oh. And before you put it on, you have to stand first. Nobody sleep on the floor and put on the armor of the Lord. Uh, any armor, a soldier will not sleep down and, and, and have a helmet on his on his head, have a, 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 a boot in a, a belt of this thing. No, you have to stand. Then look at all the armor that is stated in the book of Ephesians. One of them is offensive. The rest are defensive. The rest are defensive. The only one that's offensive is the word of God. Then he said. The word of God. He said the sword, which is the sword of the spirit. That's why we used to fight. So if you if if, if Satan is waging war against you, it's because he has seen something in you. I, I'll give you a, 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 an example. A fly will always do what? Will always go after where you have what? Honey. Or where you have dirty things. If your house is full of dirty things, of course you are you, you are what you are an avenue for what for flies to come in. The same thing happens to Satan. If your life is full, if your home is full of what the appearances of evil things, of course that will attract the devil. But then when he comes, he's, he's not fighting you because guess what? You are already his. But if your home is what is neat and and there's no uh, any any dead in it, if the, if the devil comes, you will even see when he's coming in. Because guess what? God has given us the spirit to discern when the devil is what is trying to rear his ugly head up in a family. So we look at it and say, Satan is against the family because he knows that when two two shall fight, he said, one shall chase a thousand. Two shall change ten thousand. I don't know how many, uh, how many thousands three will change, four will change, will chase rather. But then, if you are there and you are not, uh, you are not of, of God. It's going to come and 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 destroy the home. Remember, the home is built the way the Christian home is built. The home is is in this world. The Christian home is in this world. And uh, unbelievers' home is in this world. Rain will fall over it. The water will rise up. The wind will blow around it. That's the work of the devil. So it's not only Christian homes that the devil attack. It attacks other homes too, which are not Christians. But then, just like I said, when the rain falls and the water comes up and the wind blows around it, the home of a Christian will stand firm. It doesn't mean a, a Christian home will not uh, uh, face some challenges like one of my pastors used to say that it's challenge is no problem. But when the challenges come, you can overcome it because you have the Spirit of God in you. So we are not promised that we will not have problems. But Jesus Christ said something. He said in this world, 
You shall have tribulation. You shall have what? You shall have problem. But what? Be of good cheer because I want. I will overcome the world. And if Satan could fight Jesus Christ, even to the time he was on the cross of Calvary, who are we that we, we, we are not left out of the hood? We also face our own what? Fight too. 